So it's the night of June 25th. I'm laying in bed. Um, about 9.30, 9.45, I start calling Caleb on his cell phone, wondering, you know, where he is. I like checking in on him and stuff. And one of Caleb's friends was on the levee, um, got his truck stuck. So they called another friend to come and pull him out who had a bigger truck. Um, it was a wet, damp night. And um, when Orrin was going to pull out Dylan, um, he tried to hurry up and put the truck in drive because he was on a very steep angle on the levee. And when he went to throw it into drive, it only made it to reverse. And uh, when he stomped on the gas, the trucks were, his truck was heading towards me and Dylan's truck. And uh, I saw it coming at a great speed, so I jumped on top of Dylan's truck to try to get out of the way. And uh, in that, I jumped, you know, my right side got all the way on top of Dylan's truck, but my left leg just didn't make it all the way through. A little girl answers the phone and, and she's having trouble talking to me and I'm, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong? It, it's bad, Miss Tressie, it's bad. So at this point, I'm on the phone getting up, dressing, because I can tell in her voice. Caleb's friends immediately put him in the truck and headed for Our Lady of the Lake, where a team of trauma specialists are on standby around the clock. I got to the hospital probably around the same time that they did. Um, got in there. Um, one of the um, ER doctors came and met me and um, right away told me we're amputating his leg. But a specialist at Our Lady of the Lake decided to try and save the leg. A few days later, however, the lake's trauma team recommended amputation. For 17-year-old Caleb Leindecker, that meant not only losing a leg, but possibly his lifelong passion, playing football. Although he is unfortunately losing a limb that he, his quality of life will be better um, with not keeping the limb um, because of him able to do doing things and the limb may actually uh, just keep him back from doing what he's supposed to be doing because of the pain and the, and the process and the surgeries. Through 13 surgeries, six weeks in intensive care, physical therapy and learning to use a prosthetic leg, Caleb stayed focused, determined that he would wear Parkview High School's number two jersey once again. More than a year after the accident, as football season began, Caleb made it happen. So uh, Parkview scores a second time and I see number two run out on the field. And um, the stands went crazy. I was still on the field and I was right um, in front of the student section and I could hear those students screaming and hollering for number two and line decker. And, at that moment, it was um, the end of a chapter for Caleb. Um, of course, the beginning of another one. You know, just knowing that you were one of the only people in the world to step on the football field with a prosthetic leg, that, uh, that definitely helped me out a lot. Caleb's courage and determination have helped other people too. It was just an inspiration to see him back in pads and playing with us again, just like he used to before the accident. It's like nothing changed, you know? He still, he still comes in and we joke around and we work hard and everything, but it's, it's great to have him back. I was talking to Caleb last night and he was saying the reason everything's going so great right now and the recovery and everything is he doesn't know how to quit. He just keeps on going with what he's got. For Caleb's family, through all his struggles and successes, there was peace of mind. As a parent, not knowing if you're making the right decisions or not, it was heartwarming to know that the lake did everything they could have uh, for our son.